Hey, there's my dog starting to bark and shout out and let everybody know that I'm on the air. And I've hit the recording button and I just like to say hello to everybody who has signed in. You all are on mute, uh, which is good because um, it'd just be too crazy if we did it any other way. Uh, my name is Jeff Tucker. I'm just scanning through here and hopefully we are in a very fast mode. Um, could some of you just let me know that you're hearing me okay by chatting? Just type in something saying howdy so I can see that. That's um, over on the right side down toward the bottom. Should be able to say hello. I'm going to type hello. Let's see if you guys can respond. Don't be shy. Nobody's saying anything. Makes me wonder if you guys are actually out there. Hey, Doc, we hear you. All right. Super. Got it. Thanks. All right. Um, this is going to be a, a short presentation because I really don't like presentations. I think all of us have plenty of stuff to do. Um, and I hopefully you can all see the screen in front of you that says the short course on equine dentistry and the equine dentistry school online. I'm not really a, a prof, um, proficient at webinars, go to webinars. Uh, I've tried it once. It was a failure. I'm <laughs> trying again for the second time. Uh, I've decided to leave all the things on the left hand side. So if you think that this is going to take forever, you can see that this is pretty much all I've got and I'm going to whip through them pretty fast. And uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time actually going into the school uh, over here. Um, and I'm going to pause a little bit because I found out that there's a little bit of delay for um, me getting internet signal out to you. But we're going to spend time between these two spots. Um, any questions or any uh, concerns such as you're not hearing me or something's going on or whatever, just uh, go ahead and blast it out to me. All right. So... Uh, here I am, Jeff Tucker, uh, DVM, and that's uh, Rainier, a retired uh, dressage horse. He became my best buddy because he was a horse that was very sensitive in the very last tooth on the upper left side, and it was almost impossible to float him. And over time, he and I became best friends as he figured out that I knew that what was back there was hurting him, and I took it away and made him feel a whole lot comfortable. Um, most people though call me Doc T and I appreciate that. I'd rather be called Doc T um, than Dr. Tucker because uh, I was a horseman first before I became a veterinarian. Um, and that's one of those things that uh, I like to get across to everybody. I have to mention who my crew is because without these uh, two characters to, to my side, nothing would exist in my life. Uh, my wife is in the center here. Um, She's not really that small. It's just a selfie I took with a cell phone way up in the air looking down at us. Uh, but she is absolutely the rock uh, that glues us together. She's got the vision to look ahead. Uh, she's a horsewoman that I met in 1977 on a horse farm. I married her after knowing her for one month. Uh, actually, that's when I proposed. She didn't say no. Uh, it took a little bit longer. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's her, uh, 37 years married. That's my son, Matt, uh, in the red shirt, the beautiful smile, the handsome dude. Uh, he's uh, one of the best chefs I've ever had the pleasure to eat from. And he has joined this practice. He takes care of all the social media and uh, is helping to promote this business here. So uh, you're going to hear a lot from him. Um, and of course, um, there is me. Let me see if I can do this. I'm just going to do this for just a quick second. Hold on. I don't know if you can see me here. There I am. Yay. <laughs> I'm in my Sunday best. Just to let you know that I'm here actually talking to you. I'm going to turn that off because that's just a waste of bandwidth. But I just want to let you know that I'm here. I'm a little grungy today because I've been working all day getting this together and getting a lot of other things together uh, for the future. Uh, the next person who is involved in this business is Melissa. She's been with me for five years, over five years. She's done over 8,000 floats. I think it's up to 8,300 floats now, which is a lot of floats. Uh, she's my right arm out there, um, and she's actually my left arm as well because she's ambidextrous. As you can see, um, over here she's using her right arm, and up here she's using her left arm. 
uh, and she floats beautifully. None of these horses are drugged. They're all just standing there for her. She's got incredible horsemanship skills. And that's something I'd like to try and teach people. So let's get going here. I want to do the overview view of the vets of the um, school here to let you know what this is all about, just in case you want to become um, either um, an enrollee, a student of the short course, or if you want to go ahead and do the, the whole school. It's all part of the same thing. It's six modules, and each mod module is made up of some units. There's a, probably about 85 units in there, each with quizzes. I think there's 107 different quizzes. Uh, quiz questions and the whole thing. Pardon me, 703 qu quiz questions. I'm dyslexic. Don't worry about me. Uh, and then we have the overview, the visitor library, the student library, and all these things up here, which we're going to go over in a little bit. But we all started with the myths of the equine dentistry exposed and how to profit from it, a booklet that you've all have received and hopefully all have read, and that's why you're here. Um, there's two words in here I want to go over. Myths is one of them, and the other is profit. The myths, um, by definition, are lies, but I think there's a mystique around a myth. It seems like nobody knows for sure what the truth is, and that's why I chose the word myths, because I don't think people are actually out here intentionally lying about dentistry. I think they just don't know that there's other ways of looking at it. And the experts are out there um, saying what they say, but I've been doing this for 31 years, and I think I've got some other ideas about what dentistry is all about. So that's why I chose the word myths. The other word is profit, because everyone thinks of profit as, um, what do you call it, a big business and, and such. But my definition of profit really is uh, you have more at the end of the day than you have at the beginning. So yes, money's the first thing that comes to our mind, uh, but it could be uh, a relationship, uh, love, uh, satisfaction in uh, your work, whatever. As long as at the end of the day, you feel better than when you started, I think you're being profitable. Uh, it's a loose expression, but I decided to use that um, specifically for this uh, project. Uh, horse owners here will find that they get profitable at the end of the day because they're not reduce, uh, they're not wasting hay as much. Uh, you've seen this all with uh, horses in a stall. You see the long stemmy hay that they that the horses leave because they have trouble chewing it. Anyway, um, that's what this is all about. Um, they're profitable. Uh, horse owners are riding it. If they, if they can start to have fun and it can be more rewarding, or maybe they start winning more w ribbons, or whatever reason they've got a horse back uh, because their teeth don't hurt them anymore. It's less work to ride the horse. That's profitable. Uh, horse trainers that become, uh, horses get more responsive to training because they aren't fighting the bit. Uh, they're going to have more horses per year and that's going to lead to profits. And of course, horse trainers that are have more horses that are doing well will get increased money earned and they'll have more uh, clients seeking their services. And of course, if you move on and become an equine dentist, uh, there is profit in that. It's hard work, but if you're methodical and work hard at it, uh, you'll be able to um, make some money at it. So let's just go over the short course just really quickly. Short course is basically module one of the equine dentistry school. And I separated it out mainly because I want people to uh, be aware of what I'm trying to teach and get a good understanding of it and understand my style of teaching. And only then and after you've tried to do the, the short course and you're still in the game, that's the type of person I want to get into the school. I don't want you to get halfway through the school and say, boy, I wish I'd never done this. I would rather have you all just look at this and say, this is really cool. All right, the goal of the short course is to open up all your minds and think and pair my ideas of what I know from the vast data collected over 60,000 horses that I've worked on and compare it to what's in the magazines, the internet forums, and, the, and from your other fellow horsemen and have a basis to have a good discussion and decide what's best for the horse based on what you know. And that's the whole idea behind the short course. It's here for every horse owner and horse professional, just to become more knowledgeable. We tend to want to know more about feet because we can see them, or hair coats, and we give different additives, or we use different uh, products in the hair coat, but we don't get to see what's really inside the horse. And the more we know about the teeth, the happier we are. Um, the short course looks at the uniqueness of horse teeth. The teeth in a horse are not like a human's or a shark or a cat or a dog or anything else that you know. They chew up to 25,000 times per day on average, and there's no other animal out there that chews that much. Uh, even the cow, they harvest their grass and then they chew their cud. Maybe they get close to that, 
but uh, the dog and a cat and, and a shark, they just don't. So their teeth are not the same. And this is why equine dentistry is so different and is so important. I'll also discuss how dentistry helps in training and in the overall health of the horse. That's really a no brainer, but because they're out of sight, they're often out of mind. And if I can set you straight on how important the teeth are, uh, it's going to make a big difference on how you work with horses. I'm going to review the differences in the techniques, philosophies, and theories between the styles of equine dentistry being offered today. And I, I just had a question just a couple of days ago from one of my clients who said, uh, my friend has so-and-so do their horse. And they believe in this way of doing stuff. And I don't know how to respond to them. I don't know what basis I can say to convince them that you, who I've used for a decade, is better than them. And it's really become so... Uh, polar, this argument, uh, but nobody really has good uh, arguments to discuss this on a rational basis. So I set them straight um, right there in the short course. And I also talk about aging and nutrition as it relates to the teeth. I did a huge aging project, which I took pictures of um, 250 or more horses uh, aged uh, 3 to 30 and uh, put them all together. I'll show that to you uh, in the school, but that's a really cool project to look at. And nutrition, of course, and teeth uh, go hand in hand. Short co course costs $49.95 and has a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's because I wanna make sure that you like what you've got here. If you don't like it, you just say, hey, I want out, I want my money back, and boom, it's there. Uh, but if, if you do like it and you wanna move on and become an equine dentist through this course, uh, it's gonna set you on the right track. And I wrote this today, it's in your uh, letter of invitation to this webinar, but I think it's, it bears, uh, it's worth repeating. It is time to show the horse owners and horse professionals how important dentistry is to the horse and to what we try to do with a horse. The short course will bring this awareness to you for sharing with others. In other words, the short course will prepare your mind to discuss equine dentistry with others. And the school will put uh, this information in your hands to use. So it goes from in your mind to your hands and you can actually um, help other horses uh, with the skills that I'll teach you. So here's the equine dentistry school. It's modules two through five. Um, this is just a horse I'd worked on and somebody uh, caught a pretty good picture of that. Uh, that's the type of re reaction that we get uh, every time I work on horses. A lot of times it's just gratefulness and that kind of connection is kind of cool. Uh, so modules two and three are the basics, um, basically um, the, the terminology, et cetera, the stuff that you need to understand how to talk and to work with horses. Module four is the real meat and potatoes. Uh, this is how you connect with the horse within 30 seconds. And a lot of people think you can't do that, but if you ever walked into a room and connected with a person immediately, and you know how good that feeling is, well, there's a science to it. And this is what, what I teach uh, using the 10 irrefutable laws of horsemanship. We just basically say, okay, here's a horse. This is what we're doing. Um, uh, and, and, and I'm going to go in there with a rasp and get your teeth filed down. I'm not going to be using drugs. In fact, uh, if, as you've already read, um, you don't need, even need drugs in, in one out of, uh, pardon me, nine out of 10 horses. So that's pretty good. And, and you may not get there right away, but you will definitely get there. And then module five is the process of equine dentistry, where we apply the the techniques that we've learned uh, to be able to get every tooth that's in the horse's mouth smooth and comfortable for the horse using horsemanship skills based on the basics. So that's how that's put together. So who is this school for? It's basically any person who has a physical ability to work with horses, any person wanting to explore a career with horses, any person who can legally work with horses where they live. And I've gone over this pretty much the legalities of equine dentistry today in the United States and in other countries. Um, and you have to check your local area and find out if that's even a possibility and be fully aware of that before you sign up and do anything with a, the school. But to um, sign up for the short course, it doesn't matter where you live. It has nothing to do with the, the laws. So the biggest question I get from everybody is why do this online? And I'm going to answer that in about four different uh, points. First, in the Internet age, book work can be done at home. Videos and photos can be added at no expense, keeping the material current. I've added uh, material just yesterday and today uh, that wasn't there a week ago. And this way, your text is always uh, up to speed and, and, and brought to uh, current status. And any arguments or any uh, discussions can be uh, placed there for all of us to, to see and learn from. The second most important thing is the students can study at their own pace. 
and at their own schedule without leaving their family obligations or employment commitments. So if you have a job and can't get away for two weeks and learn dentistry, you can do this online at night. Or if you have a elderly uh, parent that you have to take care of or children uh, and you can't get away, this is something that you can do at home uh, in front of your computer, which to me, I think is really cool. So, um, and, and there's, <laughs> uh, there's one student now, um, he lives up in the mountains, basically in a jungle in the islands uh, down in the Dominican Republic. And he has to walk down to the local village and go to the library to get his internet connection. And he studies as much as he can. And then he goes back up to his home and uh, studies on the note cards that he's made. And that's how he's going through it. So he's going at his own pace. It's a very slow pace versus somebody else who's taking this course and went through this so fast it's spun my head uh, so that, you know, it's up to you how fast you want to go. Now here, the material can be offered worldwide. And this is so important because we all think about we live in America or we live in Australia or we live in wherever we live and we think about our local area. But um, you may have noticed that I'm committing 5% of all the earnings of the school to the Brook, the organization that takes care of uh, horses, asses, and mules that are still being used as beasts of burden throughout the world. And they estimate that there's about 110 million uh, horses, asses, and mules throughout the world. And in the United States, we only have 9.3 million horses. Um, and I think that's an interesting uh, number because at some point, some of you are going to get good enough at this that you may want to go off to some of these countries and help spread the word and teach people because there's a lot of places that don't have electricity and certainly don't have drugs and they need to take care of the horse's teeth. And I think this is a real valuable and viable way of, of taking care of horses in areas that are not as um, affluent as where we live. And finally, many students will never be able to travel to America again just because they'll never have the money, but they'll have an internet connection. They'll have a note, a computer. Maybe it's just at the library they could visit and they work on it from there. But there are students um, who can come to me from anywhere in the world and learn this and go out and start uh, doing a better job for horses. All right, that's why I do this online. Now, here's the guy who taught me how to do it. His name is Jack Lowe. He's a veterinarian. He was a professor at Cornell. And he took me aside and he says, Jeff, I'm going to teach you how to stick your hand in a horse's mouth. And that was back in 1983. And um, it's kind of funny because I took my hand out and got bit and it hurt a lot. <laughs> and he says, well, there you go. Don't get bit next time. And that was the basically the extent of his mentorship. And uh, we've remained friends. And this is a picture that was taken several years ago. Uh, where I sought him out and I wanted to make sure how much I was grateful for him showing me that one simple procedure, the same thing I'm going to teach you um, and be your mentor and help you through all this. So I believe in mentorship and I think mentorships are very important. I'm just going to do it a little bit differently than Dr. Lowe did for me. Now, the question everybody says is, can this be taught online? And I say that every technology and art form requires a certain amount of learning fundamentals. In other words, book work. For instance, uh, if you want to learn to play a piano, you're going to have to know that there are certain keys and what the keys mean and the notes, and you have to learn how to read music before you can even sit down and start playing. Um, but it's still a very simple and fundamental thing, and then you learn the art form of playing the piano. Well, same, the same thing with uh, equine dentistry. And this is what's interesting. I, I coined a new word called complexication, or the verb form is to complexicate. And we complexicate a lot of things. Uh, men are accused of complexicating everything in our lives, and, and maybe men accuse women of complexicating everything. But the definition I use is when you have something very simple and you make it more complex than it needs to be. And that's what they've done in equine dentistry. It is not complex. If you take a look at the amount of teeth a horse has, there's only six to maybe eight inches of tooth that you're taking care of. And it's right there in front of the front of us inside a, a cav cavern that is easily accessible if you know how to do it. And once you learn how to do it, it's very easy. I didn't say uh, easy in the sense of effort. There is a lot of effort. You will sweat. Uh, you'll, you'll get strong doing this. There's no doubt. And it's certainly a lot easier just to drug the horse and jack the mouth open and stick the float in there. And that's fine if that's what you want to do, but I don't think it's in the horse's best interest. And so I wanted to try to uncomplicate things and make things very simple. And that's the whole basis of the school and the short course. I want to cut through the clutter. And so I've got, uh, um, I, I want to do this through mentorship. So let me tell you how I started. Well, I already told you how I started doing this, how Dr. Lowe 
told me to shut my hand in the horse's mouth. But there's nothing else out there in 1984 when I graduated from vet school. There was no books except one called, it's called Sound Mouth, Sound Horse. I see it up on my bookshelf. Um, it's by, by a non-veterinarian tooth floater out of New Jersey who I've actually met at Gager. And it was the only book that we had. There was nothing else. There's no textbooks. There's no uh, buddy, no vet schools, uh, no associations, nothing. And slowly over the next 30 years, and yeah, in 84 to 2014 is, is 30 years. Over those 30 years, um, everybody sprung up and become experts. And I've been sitting here just baffled by the com complexification of equine dentistry. And so uh, I'm taking what I've learned, boiled it down into essence, and I'm putting it out here for you guys to learn. Okay, every student has access to me through a private and secret Facebook user group. This is part of the mentorship that is so dynamic. In other words, we all know Facebook, but there are secret Facebook groups that nobody can find unless you're invited to, and you can't hunt them down, you can't find them. Only members can be in there. And it's a free place where we can sit and ask questions. Let's say one of you has a question about how to approach a horse or what a technique is that you think could be used. And and uh, you ask the question, I'll see it, I write my answer. And what's really good is we all learn from that question. We all see that. And what's really cool is at the very top part of the Facebook page, there's a search for that group. So you can put in uh, incisors, wolf teeth, or any other term that you want to find and click search and it'll bring up all the comments, all the posts that have anything to do with that uh, word in it. So you can really scroll through there and say, has anybody else ever asked this question? Oh, there it is, this is what they said. Oh, that's cool. Hey, I wanna add my own comments here. And everybody gets to see that and we're always updated. So the Facebook user group is part of the deal. I also put out a weekly e-letter. Um, us really rolling here in, in uh, November. The last one I sent out was an interesting case. Uh, and this is what I like to do, just present case reports and bring it up to speed what's going on in the school. So we have a weekly e-letter that goes out, keeps everyone connected. And then these webinars, this is the uh, first one and every month I'm gonna be holding one uh, for all the students where we can discuss something in depth. For instance, if we don't understand a certain personality of a horse and we want to describe them or learn them a little bit better, we can go into more depth thing, just like a classroom. And you all can just raise your hands and say, hey, I've got a question and I would like to, to know some more. So it's a classroom. So do you get the idea? Um, you're not just throwing in here, you pay your money and there you go. You're gonna have access to me 24 seven. I do this work. Um, I, I know you guys don't believe this, but after 31 years, we are still out there going full tilt doing 9.7 or is it 9.6 horses every day of the year times 365 days. We're doing 9.6 horses every day floating. That's a lot of horses Melissa and I work on and we're still in the game. We're still passionate about this and we still think that uh, this is a great way to take care of horses teeth. All right, I have a couple more slides here. Let me just get to it. Oh yeah, every student that completes all the units through module five, which is the last module of the school and passes the final exam, which is randomized uh, selection of 100 of the 703 questions that you already have. Um, and in a, and in a two hour time frame, you have to pass that. If you do that, then you're considered a graduate and then you're eligible to come to Florida and spend up to three days in practical training with me and Melissa. This is included in your tuition, it's not extra. And this is where a lot of people get confused. Just because it says equine dentistry school online, it doesn't mean you can't come to me and learn. But what I've learned in the past is that um, students have come to me and said they wanna learn and I've wasted their time, they've wasted my time as I try to get them up to speed and they don't know the basics. I want people to know what the basics are, excited for what we're doing, and then come here and say, I'm ready to roll. You're already, you know, you're out of the gate more prepared than I ever was after the first 20 years of floating teeth. That's how much training you're gonna get with me. And you're gonna get your hands on horses' mouths, you're gonna actually float horses' teeth. Uh, physically, you can't do more than two in a day. If you're really strong, maybe three, but halfway through the third one, your, your, limp, <laughs> your wrist is gonna go limp and you're just gonna be exhausted. It's just one of those things you have to build yourself up to. But at least you'll know what the end result is and what you're striving for. You're gonna see all the different techniques used, which is really cool. So it's not required to take this and you don't have to take all three days. Let's say you can only afford to come down here one day. You've got like a Saturday or a Sunday, you fly down here Saturday. Well, pardon me, we try not to work on weekends, but you just take one day, boom, you get it done, go flying back and tell your boss you're sick that day and you come back to work the next day. But at least you have one day of intense um, 
uh, physical training or practical training with us. So uh, you're not let down at all. And finally, after our graduation, you can have some private coaching. If you need some more days with us, there's a way you can uh, pay for that and get one, two, three, four more days. You, there's a certification program that we have. This is all in the overview, so you can read this. I don't want to spend all your time here. Uh, we're 24 minutes into this thing, and I want to keep going. Uh, there's three levels of support, uh, basic um, uh, certification level and a business level. And the business level is a module six. For those of you who really want some help to get started, I can build your website. I can get you an iPad with a proprietary program that uh, we're going to build, that we have built, and we can put in there. That's in its finishing touches right now. And we can set you up with a reminder system so all your clients get a reminder. Five months later, it says, hey, look, next month your horse is due for every six months floating, and it's a really good time to get hold of me. And we can take care of all that. It's a little bit more expensive, but... It just takes all the burden and pressure off you of running a business and gets you up and running all the way. So the details are all online. All right, what I'd like to do now is switch over and give you a tour of the school. Uh, and as I switch over there, does anybody have any questions so far? All right, I've switched over to new window. Hopefully um, it's all gotten to you. I know that there's a lag for some people, it depends on how fast your internet is. So this is a landing page of the school. It's called equinedentistryonline.com. You can go there and take a look at it yourself, but why don't you just not do that and watch me? You can go, go there later. But you have the login, uh, the overview, the frequently asked questions, the visitor library, and of course become a student, which you don't have to see because you already are getting this presentation. The overview, um, is fairly lengthy. Uh, these are all the, the chapters in here. I go over the syllabus of mo module one through module six, and then the course structure, practical training, certification, business, and support for graduates. So it's all here. Everything that you need to know about this school, you can read right here. Um, I actually have a couple of corrections I have to do tonight. Um, so I may, you know, it may not, if you go and, and download it and print it, uh, I might have a couple of changes, but they're um, not too critical. So here are all the different modules. These are the units. This is the uh, short course here. And these are all the titles of the units. Uh, and there's 18 in module two and 25 in module three. So that takes care of all the basics. There's anatomy and, and how they chew and threshold of pain and some quirky things called flabby cheeks and nooks and crannies, which are... Um, I try to make this fun and memorable. And we talk about transverse ridges, hooks, wave mouth, delayed eruption, all the different things you need to know uh, to get you going, including big things like this, osteoarthropathy and osteoarthropathy. And for, of course, I've lost the why. I don't know where it went. Somebody stole it. I'm going to have to put it back. Um, this is the horsemanship thing. It's based on our 10 irrefutable laws of horsemanship, a book that I wrote. You can download it, but uh, this is included in the course. And it's not just the book, but it's the book and how it's applied to equine dentistry. So I go into a lot of these laws in depth and how you can work with these things. Then the process of equine dentistry, the first half is uh, safety, applying horsemanship, how you approach a horse, how to do the oral palpation uh, without a speculum, uh, how to handle easy horse and how to handle the difficult horse and when to medicate. Then I get to the into the equipment, then I get into the specialties, the pitch yawn roll, the techniques that we use, um, how to and when to use them, how to extract wolf teeth. These are major units and they take a lot. So even though there's 18, this is a very lengthy uh, module. And finally, the final exam. And then the overview, uh, the course structure, uh, this basically tells you what's going on. So you can read all of this. It's all on that home page under, um, under overview. And everywhere you go, you have these lines here with the go to top, or you have this little yellow thing over here that takes you up very slowly. Okay, frequently asked questions. All the questions that I think might be in your brain are here. They're all anchored with these things. So you can just click on these things and it drops you right down to it. And then you click here and it takes you right back up to the top. But how uh, can is this be learned online? Um, do I need to work on horses to be good at this? This is the number one question to answer it pretty thoroughly right here. Uh, 
Is there practical training offered? Do you already know that? If I'm certified, am I legal in my state or country? Uh, do I need to travel to Florida to become certified? And why become certified? I think these are pretty good questions here. How much does it cost? Um, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, how long does it take? Can I make a living doing dentistry? Can I even do dentistry after I graduate? And is there help after I graduate? So these are the major questions that I've gotten already in the past and should be very quick for you to go over. This visitor library is here for everybody. You don't have to be signed up. Any Joe Blow can come through here or Jane uh, can come through here. And the Horse by Aging Project is a really unique project that uh, I put together by almost 300 horses uh, where I go over the different um, ages from three all the way up here to 30 plus and I look at them from four different views. So in other words, I have the right lateral, the left lateral, the rostral caudal and the occlusal surface. And I do this for each one. And then when I get here, if you want to click on one, you can actually open it up into a larger page and you can actually see these on um, blast through them and look at all the differences and compare. And over down here, it shows how old it is and the breed and whether it's a boy or a girl. So I just want to show you that. And uh, where is my top? There it is. And then also in the visitor library, I have this uh, by view, not just by age. So you can look at it by view. I have body condition score. That's a really cool one. I think body condition score is very important for us all to, to watch. Um, don't look at number one. This is a very thin horse. I know it's shocking for you to see. Um, this was a rescue. This horse has had the best care in the world and just was dying in front of us. And there's nothing, no teeth care could help with that. Uh, so it goes from one to nine, the body condition scores. And um, if you want to see a fat horse, there's a fat horse. And what a sweet horse this horse is. And, and, and we get in there and float his teeth and you, you, he almost swallows you. It's kind of funny. Um, let's see, visit a library. We can just return library here. I try and make a navigation here as easy as possible. I have EOTRH because this is the up and coming disease that everybody's finding out. I used to call it ugly teeth of old horses. Uh, I have nine different cases here, again, all in a um, what I call a um, gallery format. And I even have a video of this horse chewing, um, and he has no teeth up front, just one tooth. So that's a pretty interesting one. You might want to spend some time taking a look at that. And finally, um, I have uh, floating in eight short videos, and this is the uh, eight videos that I've always had on my website. They've been around forever. And then the split view floating example. Uh, but I'm going to show you a real one when we get over and sign in. So those are the three things that you all can find uh, coming here uh, without even signing in. Okay, where is... Uh, hold on. We all should have um, LastPass here. Uh, that helps log in, keep all your passwords safe and secure. Hopefully you didn't get that. At least our dots. All right, so this is a logged in page. And if you notice up here, you still have the overview and the student library, which is really good because then you never leave that. It's always there. Uh, pardon me, the visitor library. So these two are always there. But here you also have the student library. And this is a really cool feature uh, that I'm constantly adding to. We have basic floating techniques, cap remnants, cheek tooth fractures. These are all videos that I've taken. And, it and you can just sit in here and take a look at it. If you're not signed up, this is all you're going to see. You're not actually going to see the whole thing. And if you're a horse uh, short course uh, student, you're not going to see the whole thing because this is for uh, full time students. But it just gives you an idea of what is available. And um, I love these uh, split views. Um, I'll show you one here. This is a split view in one side. I've got the stall view and the other side, I've got the helmet cam. You can see the helmet cam on Melissa as she works here. Let me just run this for a little bit. If you've got headphones and you're listening, you, you're going to hear me talking in the right ear. And when she talks, it'll be in the left ear. So, so you can hear her comments. And you can hear my comments. And there I am taking. And it's really cool. And if you want, you can hit this button and, it, and let me turn that off. You can hit this button here and expand it to full view so you can see that, so you can see it larger. Uh, but these are a great way to learn how to uh, 
float and sit there for um, 30 minutes and actually watch his float of teeth from two different views and watch these over and over and over again. It's really cool. Uh, the My School is where you basically go. My account over here just is all the admin pages for where you want to change your information or your password. But My School is right here. Um, and you just click on this. And here are all the different units. This is the short course on equine dentistry. And then we go down. Here's the basics. And here's the basics too. And whenever there's a green check mark and these are hyperlinked, it means that you can go here and see what's going on. Um, let's see, chips and fractures of teeth. And I'll just give you an idea. Every, um, every unit has a format. And I start with a definition and I explain exactly what is going on here. I put pictures in that are annotated. Um, so it gives you some ideas. Of, of, I, of what I'm trying to get across. Here's sagittal fracture versus transverse fracture versus a coronal fracture. And then I follow that up with principle. And every unit has this. You have definitions right there, and then you have principle. And in the principle, I talk about certain things that are very important, such as trauma, enamel chips, pulp chamber fractures. So you can really understand what's going on here. And luckily, I've gotten some x-rays that have been sent to me that showed clear fractures of teeth. I don't need x-rays to find them. I always find them when I stick my hand in there. The next section I have is called theory. And the theory I have for every section, because I want you to understand what a theory is. It's, it's a supposition. It's a, it's a thought of what I believe is true. And then I take my observations and try and get facts to prove that theory. And so the theory may or may not be what you know about teeth. And then I try and prove that theory. And I do that in every one of these that I do. So here's enamel chips. I try and get nice pictures. I caption each one of these pictures. That's a canine. It's uh, fractured off. Um, I'm an avid photographer, so I have thousands. There's got to be 2,500 pictures in here. And I've got another um, probably 800 to 1,000 pictures to add. And they'll be going in in the next week or so. Uh, they'll be in the library, which would be really cool. Here's a nice sagittal fracture you can't even see because it's all gummed up with food and this is the food i pulled out and here's the fracture seeing sitting out here right into the cheek and here's the major part of the teeth here i've cleaned out a little bit and you can see how it's eroded right into the cheek um, and here i go in with a um, forceps and this is how i do it with my hand again no speculum when i do this i can't remember if this horse is drugged or not fractures uh, sometimes are painful sometimes aren't i just took two fractured pieces out of a horse uh, on friday and didn't require any drugs. The horse is so grateful when it came out. Uh, they're often painful, but you can see that uh, the tooth uh, piece is missing, and that's a fractured tooth hanging out uh, right there. And it actually is fractured in two places, so it'd been there for a while. So this is what uh, units look like. Oh, and then I have these whiteboards, and I love these whiteboards because So I love drawing. I love drawing the board. This is in my office. And on almost every uh, unit through here, whether it's on the horsemanship or whatever, I do a dynamic thing. Because a lot of people, they get bored when they start reading. They get bored of pictures. But when they sit here and learn a lesson, it makes sense. They, they can put two and two together, which is really cool. And here I have more galleries of just fractured pieces that I've taken out in the past. And then at the very end, we have a quiz. And yes, I got one wrong. So, oh, well, anyway, the quizzes uh, are pretty simple. They're usually true, false, or they're multiple choice. Uh, this one is mostly true, false. Um, I don't know why. A lot of times I'll throw in some uh, multiple choice. I don't ever have any free flowing uh, essays. So it's pretty straightforward. And once these are completed, then you get the go ahead up here. It says you've passed and download the results if you want to look at it and allows you to go on to the next unit. You can't go to the next unit until this uh, quiz is passed, and here I get into tooth decay. So that's how this is set up, and you can always go back to my school and go right here, and again, look at all these things uh, that we have. Um, and this is the business of equine dentistry. Let's see, I just got dinged, and I don't know what that means. I don't see a question. Um, Maybe someone just texted me. I don't know. It's this new uh, Mac system, and sometimes they ding you when somebody texts you. All right, so that's what's going on in the school. We're at 38 minutes into the program. Let me just go back here and say, 
I'm pretty much done. It's time to answer some questions. This is the equine dentistry school online.com. If you want to write that down, I will be sending that to you in email. So if you don't have something to write it down or you mess up, it'll be there. Uh, the short course, just remind you, has a 30 day money get back to guarantee if you want to purchase it. Um, if you go here to the equine dentistry school online, I'll, I'll have that link in the email. That's what I'll do. Uh, but once you get into the school, there are no refunds uh, because this is all proprietary and, and I want to make sure that you're there and, and everybody's happy. Before I go, uh, one last thing. Um, here I am. Here's Melissa. And you can see the height difference and the size difference. But what's interesting in this, this slope is uh, Deborah, who uh, is a veterinarian in Arizona, who took the course and graduated and passed the final exam, Flying Colors. And... Um, she came to Florida on this sweltering 95 degree day. You can see how hot we are. And she got in there and she did the floats. This is the end of her third day, uh, getting her hands in there um, and floating horses for real. She just finished floating one where I didn't help at all. It was all on her own. Uh, we tend to drug these horses just to make sure that you've got the ins and outs all uh, perfectly. And we try and make sure that the horse selected is pretty good. Uh, but I just want to let you know that a lot of you uh, women out there um, probably thought that you had to be big, strong, and stupid like this guy. But here's my poster child or has been my poster child for you don't have to be big, strong, and stupid. And now we've got someone who's even smaller uh, who says it's true. And let's just put it to her words. The next three are her quote that she just said to me. I think this is really good. Uh, uh, Deborah had been floating teeth using um, a power tool, sedation, hydronic, hydraulic, ergonomic, portable stocks. It has been a smooth transition to the horsemanship style of dentistry uh, thanks to the teaching, guidance, and encouragement that Dr. Tucker has provided. I'm so grateful for her, her kind words uh, because here's a gal who came all the way from Arizona on blind faith, but she knew that this style of dentistry resonated with what she believed was the right thing to do. And even though she'd been doing the power tools and the drugging, automatic drugging in the, in the stocks for approximately 10 years, she started off with hand floats and she does her holistic, dent, her holistic practice uh, not using um, any restraints. And she just wanted to get back to that. This is what else she said. Clients have been excited about the change and my client base has grown since finishing the course and announcing the offering of horsemanship dentistry to clients. The response has been overwhelmingly positive. And that was her biggest concern. She said, I was afraid that if I uh, switched from my power tools that everyone was used to and went to the horsemanship based equine dentistry, that my clients would be afraid, they'd be worried and they might leave me. And quite the opposite was true. They actually came up to her and they said, I'm glad you came to your senses. Um, we are so appreciative. I know that you're, that you're learning. I know it's a, it's a time of transition for you, but we're here for you. And we want to make sure this transition goes really well. And she writes me uh, two, three or three times a week, just telling me all the exciting news that she's going through in her life. And finally, this is the last of her quote. She says, I now number Dr. Tucker amongst my mentors that have taught and changed me for the better. I'm forever grateful for his courage to step out and challenge the status quo with truth and integrity. And this last word, integrity, is everything that we have at the end of the day, and it's the basis for this school. So I wanted to make sure you guys knew who I was and, and heard it from somebody else uh, before I went ahead and uh, before you went ahead and just decided to click on this with blind faith. Other people have been doing this. So there you have it. Um, I know you all have access to the panel on your computer where you can start typing in some questions. Um, and uh, if you do, just go ahead and uh, ask away. And everybody's a little nervous, either that or I did a great job in presenting this. But um, I'm going to send you all an email uh, in the next 30 minutes or so um, just saying, okay, how did it go? And, and make sure that if you had any questions, you can email me directly. Uh, I'll make sure the links of where you can purchase this course or get more information and make sure that you have the uh, address for the website there. So that's it. I'm pretty excited about this. I tried to go slow, but that's impossible in my life. I'm pretty passionate about this and I hope you uh, all enjoyed it. I'm so grateful that you all came here tonight. All right, I'll, I'll wait around for a couple. Oops, here we go. We got one. Would you ever recommend using a regular speculum? Um, the answer to that is uh, I have, don't own one, uh, so I, I just have never used one. Um, 
I have tried them. I've had several dentists try, um, I say, come on, doc, uh, stick your hand in here and feel around and see how much safer it is. For me, it, um, it's, it's an obstruction. I don't feel like I can move around as well. Uh, my arms are fairly large and I use Kevlar sleeves that prevent the cuts from the teeth. And so I feel very protected that way. Melissa doesn't use a Kevlar. She feels like her arms are small enough. She doesn't seem to get the uh, 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 worries that I do uh, on some of these horses. But um, if, you're, if you've got large arms and you want Kevlar sleeves, that's part of the deal. That's, uh, we usually, I usually wear them all the time, especially with male horses with canines. Um, but I found that they uh, obstruct me. I, they obstruct my movement of the float blade because I do a lot of uh, movement of the float to get around, get all the back teeth. Um, there have been several stories of these things suddenly just breaking uh, and crushing people's hands as they're in there. Uh, horses getting scared and swinging about, it becomes a weapon um, and other stories. And granted, they're all stories, uh, but I do know that in my practice of over 60,000, I've never used one. I never owned one. I do use a wedge speculum. If I do need to keep the mouth open for a little bit, it's a rubber wedge speculum uh, to go in there and grab something. But even that just uh, gets in the way. So Mike, I hope that uh, answers your question there. And um, oh yeah, for maybe for teaching purposes uh, to clients. Uh, that's a great question because a lot of people say, and, and it's being promoted in a lot of the schools and even veterinary schools, that if you have the horse uh, sedated and you have the mouth uh, opened up with a speculum, you can bring the, the client in there and, and, and point to them either with the flashlight or with your hand or bring their hand in and say, see, um, and, and they do see and they do feel, but they don't know what normal is. And I find that um, when you have a bunch of people climbing in there that actually don't know what they're feeling, how do they know what normal is and what you're doing? Um, and and I found in my career that my clients absolutely uh, have faith because the horse always tells them the truth. And in other words, I say to the clients, I can tell you anything, but tomorrow your horse will tell you the truth on the bit. And oftentimes these horses that are spilling grain stop spilling grain instantly or over uh, two or three, four days after floating, I get uh, responses uh, Doc, you solved my bidding problems. He's going so well. Everything's going great. And I'll teach you as a, as a student uh, all these responses that people have and how to handle them and how to make them uh, understand that what we're doing is important. But no, I don't believe that uh, owner needs to be in there um, feeling stuff. It's just something over the years that I've, I've decided not to have them do. Okay. Does your program provide for a route to the new board certification um, option with the AVMA. Um, I don't think, maybe I'm just not aware that the AVMA has a board cert. Oh, yes, yes, I am, the board certification. Uh, no, the uh, board certification uh, of the American Dental Association, or American Veterinary Dental Association, AVDA, um, is a board certification. You have to be a veterinarian, and I think it should be included, um, but I think it's a process that I haven't gone that route just because I've just been doing this for so long, I don't need to go get certified. Yet I think that would be a great place uh, that we should introduce uh, this style of dentistry. Um, but it's a long uphill battle because the people who have become uh, certified, uh, um, what's the word, um, board certified, um, are, are, are looking at dentistry in a little bit different way than, than a way you and I might look at it. So um, the... Um, Board certification is something that I would love to try and pursue in the future, but it's not on the near horizon right now. Okay, and let's see, I think that's about it. So um, there you go. Uh, any more questions? And you certainly feel free to contact me. Um, the name is Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, at theequinepractice.com, or just reply to the email that I'm going to send you. And if you have any questions that you come up with later on today or tomorrow, uh, I'm going to be working all this week, uh, Monday through Thursday. Uh, Friday, I've got the day off as I prepare, because uh, I'm going up to Springfield, Massachusetts. If anybody's going up to Springfield, Mass, to, uh, to the Expo, the Equine Affair, that's up there. We'll be at booth 322 in the Better Living Center. So you can come meet me, shake my hand, um, ask me questions there if you're in the New England area. All right. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you spending the time with me tonight. And uh, now go spend the rest of the night with 
uh, your family, your loved ones, or the football game tonight. Appreciate it. Good night.